Good morning, class 12. So, we have come to the last part of the chapter, uh, chapter 7, uh, where we were discussing about natural capital. So, today I will be discussing the last two points which basically come in the objective category. So, on page number 132, as you have all understood the importance of natural capital now, we will be discussing one objective question which talks about ecological footprint. So, you get this question for two marks, ecological footprint. What is the meaning of ecological footprint? It says on page number 132, when human beings utilize nature, when we use nature, resources from the nature, that is natural capital, when we are using, how are we impacting the biosphere? How are we impacting the environment? That is called the ecological footprint. When human beings utilize the natural capital, whatever resources we are using from the nature, we are definitely impacting the resources of the environment. That is termed as ecological footprint. So, the amount of land, the amount of water, the amount of air that is required for a human being to survive, that is called the ecological footprint. In simple language, we can see, we can uh, see that the amount of environment that one person requires to survive, uh, live a comfortable life, that is called ecological footprint. When I survive, I need a piece of land, I need air, I need soil, I need food, I need shelter. So the amount of environment necessary for a person to survive, then I will also generate waste. Is that waste getting assimilated into the environment? How much of waste am I generating? Does that waste get assimilated into the environment? That in totality is called ecological footprint. Okay? And then the second uh, part of ecological footprint talks of ecological footprint analysis. So you get this question as EFA. So what does EFA stand for? It stands for ecological footprint analysis, which compares human demands on nature with the biosphere's ability to regenerate the resource. What is my demand on nature and what is the nature's potential to provide me with those resources that is called ecological footprint analysis. So we try to understand when we take the entire population of a country into account, we try to understand what is that population's demand on nature and is nature able to regenerate the resources that we are using within the given time frame that is called ecological footprint analysis. So when we try to understand ecological footprint analysis, we are actually teaching the people about the carrying capacity of the earth. Are we within the carrying capacity? Is my demand from nature, is it within the carrying capacity of the earth that we are trying to educate the people? And ecological footprint is demand on nature and the regeneration of nature uh, by nature within the time frame, ecological footprint analysis. Uh, we are trying to tell the people live within the carrying capacity let the earth be sustainable. So if we are sustainable, if there is sustainable development, only then will the biosphere be able to regenerate and give back the resources to us that we are using, uh, misusing, degenerating on a daily basis. So basically this question comes for two marks. Either you are asked about ecological footprint, which means Humans demand on nature and nature's ability to provide you with that resource. And sometimes you are asked ecological footprint analysis where we try to compare our demand, the population's demand on nature and the biosphere's ability to regenerate the resource. So we
we are trying to understand the carrying capacity of the earth, right? So this is also related to natural capital. And the last part of your chapter uh, talks of, we have uh, spoken in length about natural capital. In the previous class, I told you the reasons why natural capital is getting degenerated. And the last topic talks of how then do we regenerate the natural capital? We are using it, we are misusing, we are degenerating. They are disappearing from nature because of various reasons. Now, if we are to survive, we definitely need to regenerate the natural resources. Now, few points. How do we regenerate the natural resources? How do we let the resources be within the carrying capacity? Uh, number one says, most crucial factor for resources to be there in the environment is to control the population. It is the large number of people which are degrading and misusing the resources. But once the population is under control, the nature's ability to regenerate will automatically be uh, good. So first thing that we need to do is to control the population of various countries so that the demand uh, on nature for natural resource is minimized. Then the second says, I was telling you in the previous lecture, pollution, when there is air pollution or water pollution or whatever kind of pollution, pollution harms the biosphere, pollution harms the natural capital. Our resources are being harmed because of various kinds of pollution, most of which are again anthropogenic. And if it is anthropogenic, it can be controlled. We can do something to control that source of pollution. So we have to try to reduce pollution at the micro level. Micro level means it should start with me and you. We have to start reducing pollution. And if we are able to reduce pollution, the resources in the environment will not be harmed. So this is another way of bringing back or regenerating the natural capital. Then it says renewable resources should be sustained. We see that renewable resources are inexhaustible, but the way we are utilizing the renewable resources also, it will take time to come back to nature. So renewable resources, whatever resources which can be renewed also, like forest is an example of a renewable resource, but the way we are degrading it, it will take a very long time to come back. So, renewable resources also have to be used in a very, very sustained manner, right? And when we talk of non-renewable resources, as we know, they cannot be replenished. They get exhausted once they are used. So, we have to try to recycle and minimize our use of non-renewable resources, okay? So, these are some things uh, in totality in one line we can say. Uh, that if we have sustainable development, if each and every person is a sustainable consumer, then the natural capital can be regenerated and protected for us and also for the coming generation. So class, uh, section C, there are two chapters. Chapter 7 is complete with this particular topic of regeneration of natural resources. Now we are only left with section C, last chapter, chapter 8, which I will be starting in my next video lesson. Thank you class.